Before you proceed into the course content, you must understand that most communities regulate their buildings based on the occupancy classification, which is assigned based on the use and character of a building. A building's use is evaluated for life safety and fire risks, and its character represents the functions and activities that are expected to occur in the building. An occupancy classification is based on the relative hazards within a building, and similar uses are grouped into occupancy categories. A correct occupancy classification establishes the foundation for all the code requirements that are intended for the building's safe use. Occupancies are classified into groups and subgroups using the requirements in the International Building Code, or IBC. In most communities, the Fire Code official does not have the legal authority to assign an occupancy classification. This task is normally assigned to the Building Code official. The reason is the IBC addresses not only fire and life safety aspects, but also includes requirements for accessibility of mobility-impaired persons, building sanitation, such as potable and wastewater systems, building ventilation, such as the fresh air supply and heating, ventilating, and air conditioning systems, as well as various structural loads of the building itself, and external loads, including snow, wind, rain, and seismic ground movements. A building's occupancy classification influences these and other building code provisions. The IFC is primarily concerned with control of combustible materials and ignition sources, proper design, construction, and maintenance of fire protection systems, safety of emergency responders, and mitigation of processes or uses that represent a fire hazard or a high potential of injury or death, such as the release of hazardous materials through safe design, construction, operation, and maintenance. The factors that govern the classification of a building's use must be carefully considered so that those uses or occupancies having approximately the same combustible content and similar fire and life hazard characteristics will be classified under the same occupancy heading. Occupancies should be grouped so that fire protection requirements and height and area limitations applicable to the occupancy groups are rational for all building uses within that group. Every classification must be based on the premise that the uses covered by each will have similar fire hazards and life safety problems and that they share like characteristics. Within any given occupancy group or subgroup, no wide differentiation should exist between the fire hazards of the most hazardous and the least hazardous uses. The occupancy groups include 10 major classifications as follows. A. Assembly B. Business E. Educational F. Factory Industrial H. Hazardous I. Institutional M. Mercantile R. Residential S. Storage U. Utility and Miscellaneous In addition to these major classifications, the occupancy groups of assembly, factory industrial, hazardous, institutional, residential, and storage are further divided into subgroups in order to accommodate some variations in the hazards associated with the uses within each group. For example, hotel versus an apartment dwelling in the residential classification. The fire load characteristics in factory, industrial, and storage occupancies vary considerably depending upon the product or process involved, and therefore these uses are further classified into subgroups of low and moderate hazard depending upon the potential fire severity. The occupancy subgroups for specific classifications are as follows. A. Assembly A1 Fixed seating for entertainment, that is, theater or concert hall. A2 Drinking and dining establishments. A3 General assembly classification, if others don't apply. A4 Indoor sports facility. A5 outdoor sports facility. F. Factory Industrial F1. Moderate Hazard Factory Manufacture or Assembly of Combustible Products F2. Low Hazard Factory Manufacture or Assembly of Non-Combustible Products H. Hazardous H1. 
use or storage of hazardous materials with a detonation potential. H2, use or storage of hazardous materials with a deflagration potential. H3, use or storage of hazardous materials which present a significant physical hazard. H4, use or storage of hazardous materials which present a health hazard. H5, semiconductor fabrication facilities or research labs. I, institutional. I1, 24-hour care where a supervised environment or custodial care is provided. I2, 24-hour medical care or hospital facility. I3, detention facility or jail. I4, daycare facility. R, residential. R1, hotel or motel, transient stay. R2, apartment or dormitory, non-transient stay. R3, general residential classification if other classifications do not apply. R4, halfway house or group home. S, storage. S1, moderate hazard storage, combustible products. S2, low hazard storage, non-combustible products. As more and more buildings are being designed either for a single specialized purpose or as a part of a larger type of building complex, the need for more special code considerations has been recognized. Some examples of these special uses include automobile parking structures, domed stadiums, high-rise buildings, covered mall and open mall buildings, airport terminals, and large industrial complexes, such as steel mills and assembly plants. For additional information or details of the various occupancy classifications, refer to Chapters 3 and 4 of the International Building Code. Thank you.